So we have been sharing intelligence about the uh, latest fraud threats and trends in the industry, but we're really here to encourage greater collaboration across what's a really kind of thriving industry here in Gibraltar uh, about sharing data and intelligence about the emerging fraud threats and the financial crime threats. So it is then a two-pronged attack. You are approach rather than attack. You're speaking to the betting companies, but you're also going to have a word uh, or direct a message at punters, at those who may be thinking of having a gamble and to not do anything untoward. Yeah, so certainly we're seeing two different types of frauds where an individual might have crossed the line between what's honest and dishonest. Uh, so there is what's called bet and regret type frauds, where someone might put uh, a bet on their credit card, uh, regret that bet and then argue for their card issue or the bank for a chargeback. That's them saying, I didn't make that bet. But in fact, that's increased by 172% in the last nine months. So people are regretting that. And with the World Cup coming up, people doing betting more. We've got to warn people of the repercussions of what they might think is uh, something acceptable. It's not acceptable. It's fraud. Remind me then, because you mentioned one of the types of fraud. Uh, you, you mentioned that one in six, now one in seven people don't realise... I think it's the other way around. One in fraud. seven people say they've actually done this or they know someone, and one in six people think it's OK. They don't think right. it's illegal or anything illegal. So there's more people don't think it's illegal, but one in seven people. There's quite a lot of people who think that hmm. they would make a bet and then go, to the, um, go for a chargeback and ask for that money back saying it's not them when it is them. Now, of course, the banks, the uh, gambling companies will investigate that. And if they investigate and find it's fraudulent, that your card hasn't been stolen, hasn't been used, you have uh, tried to get that money back, then that will be lodged on the National Fraud Database and shared across all the members in the financial service industries and the, in the gaming companies. And when we're talking about repercussions, I mean, what are some of the more tangible repercussions that people might anticipate if, this, if, they, if they do something like this? Yeah, so you're, you've got then what's called a CIFAS marker. That's a flag for any other applications you make to the banks, the credit cards, loan companies, tele telecoms operators, and they may look at you in a different way. They may not want to have you as a customer in future because you've demonstrated that you've been dishonest. So uh, this database is there to protect the companies and the company's bottom line from fraudsters. Mm. So if you, you don't want to be in that category, I would say. I think you want to avoid being in that category. So if you think it's acceptable, it's not acceptable and you will have repercussions. So you might find it hard to get a loan, a mortgage, a credit card. Your bank might even exit you as a customer.